As you breathe deeply, let's bring in the uh, beautiful golden light from the sun within the sun, the great central sun, and just move that down your crown, your point of essence down your crown, down your central column, and keep that wonderful breath going deeply, deeply into the Dantian. Relax into the breath and move the energy down into the core of the earth, all the way down your feet, touching the nerve endings on the feet, down into the core. Feel that oneness with Gaia. Breathe deeply. And now move your attention to a point in your brain, between your brain, the right and left. Just a beautiful golden point of love. Just bring it there first. Feel that beautiful golden light. Just bring your attention there. And now bring it down a few inches behind the breastbone two, three inches in, and just bring that attention, that beautiful golden energy there, beautiful golden ball. And keep breathing deeply as you let that ball expand, this magnificent golden love, this golden energy, just expand it out until you're sitting in it. And know that through intent, all your dreams, all your wishes are being made into a reality. If you're going through pain in any way, we ask that you move before the, before the pain occurred. Move to the time before. And in this beautiful golden ball that surrounds you, bring in an iridescent rainbow mist, the gentlest of iridescent rainbow mists, and bring it into that area where you have a challenge. And just let it shift that. Feel what it was like before and then bring in that rainbow light to manifest that wellness. And know that at any point you can do this for your manifestation. First go to the wellness point, then bring in the iridescent rainbow light. So you may wish to do this during the channeling. Let that golden light surround you. Then feel the golden balls of light joining and filling this room.
beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are love. Take that into your heart. Hold it as your truth. Bring the iridescent rainbow mist on that. It is true for you. Manifest that. Know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so it is. Dear ones, I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I've just prepared my partner for what we're going to do. Where I want him to be alerted. <laughs> that there would be some revelation. Perhaps even epiphany or two. And the things that we wish to discuss this evening. These are never long and drawn out, and they will be to the point. I know who you are. I know who is here. I know the reasons you are here. I know what brought you here. I know the synchronicities of having you in the chair. In a crowd this size, you would think perhaps there would be a section of those who are struggling to believe what is going on right now. And there are. And there are. There's 12 of you. <laughs> and we might say that you were disbeliever we might would say that that you are not really ready for this and I will say to you you're very ready for this the synchronicity of the day finds you in the chair and let me speak to you right now dear one who believes this is a human being who is pretending listen to me listen to me God knows what's going on in your life why you're in the chair what brought you here? It is the synchronicity that brought you here. So that maybe you could open your heart to things that, that in the past you felt were not real. And here you sit. And perhaps you're here to honor the one next to you. Perhaps you're here to see the rocks. <laughs> And you are really ripe with healing tonight. There's 12 of you. This is the time when spirit ravels itself into a synchronistic linearity. It is almost as though you had a room full of human beings who could only draw straight lines. And God could only see circles. But humans must have something that has a beginning and an end. And with God, there is nothing like that. For there is no beginning and no end. And so in these moments, spirit comes and uses a human being to ravel itself up into a linear ball and then deliver these things in a straight line. That's why it's hard. That's why the channel must be clear. What we speak of tonight has simplicity in it, profundity in it, truth in it. We're going to talk about the path to God. But before we do that, I am going to present you with something that I want you to remember. My perception 
as cryon of who sits in front of me without exception each one of you including the workers who have come here not as attendees including those on the stage including those you cannot see behind the scenes every single one every single human has this attribute and that is I was there when you came part of the energy you feel when I speak is the knowingness of a brother a sister an energy that said goodbye to you on the other side of the veil yet again when you came into this earth plane and gave away that part of you that is interdimensional and that part of you that knows who you are into a restricted reality of linearity you called humanness as the group said just a moment ago you are in the process of remembering the whole thing I was there that is part of what cryon does no exceptions unbeliever I was there for you too there's there's an irony here and I will go ahead and say it in the 12 who have come who are not believing any of this there is a shaman and he knows it and the reason he doesn't want to accept this is because the last time he did it was difficult and he remembers that at a cellular level and he doesn't want to do it again and even the energy of Sedona bothers him he talks about the love of God about the, the jar that is inside of him that is filled with wisdom that he doesn't want to let out and so he's pretending he doesn't believe <laughs> you see I know who you are and if you do nothing from this point on I will tell you you are just as loved as the one who goes out with incredible interdimensional wisdom the same number of angels sir are going to go out the door with you as the highest healer in the room because that is the persona of spirit when I look at you I see family I don't see human beings and I don't see the names on your badges I don't see the names on your registration I see the name that I know that I sing in light your family to me all of you every single one there's no exceptions and we have said this so often in these situations you have no idea of the entourage who has who has arrived to sit next to you while these messages are given just in case you decide to push on the door of a reality that that you didn't have before just in case You want a little more light. You don't know who came to see whom here. You just don't know. This is not a Sedona event. This is a universal event. And in this place, there are thousands who are next to you. Energy is ready to spring into action with the epiphanies, with permission, with allowance. That's who's here. And some of you will feel it. And as this channel unfolds, you'll feel it. I want to talk about the path to God. Well, Crying, you've talked about that before. Oh, this is what we do. But maybe not this frankly <laughs> God is no stranger to the planet or to human nature let me remind you of some things that actually are the telltale signs of the proof that God exists your own history is filled with scriptures written just the way this channeling has 
been unfolding. And yet you don't see it that way, do you? If you went to the far corners of the earth and spoke of God in any language, you would be met with understanding, for humans know about God. Humanity knows about God. In fact, humanity spends a great deal of time, effort, resources, emotions searching for the Creator. Searching for a way to touch the hand of the Creator. And you know what I speak of. 90% of humanity believes in God. 85% of humanity believes in the afterlife that when you go from this place there is another and what does that tell you you have nothing like that in any consensus on the planet about anything else <laughs> because it's intuitive it's in the cells you know something that perhaps you have not verbalized that God is real that there's more than there seems to be that you know when you take the last breath that's not the end you know it intuitively you come in that way and humanity spends all of this time searching for the Creator that's what humanity does is that not proof of God think about it God is common to humanity it is the way you search that gets you in trouble new ager <laughs> for when you speak of God you speak of God in a different way your path to God is a different way it seems odd and unusual to so many it's not that you're searching for God it's just that you've decided to do it in an unusual way from their perception the planet searches for God. Look around you. When you pass a chapel, when you pass a cathedral, when you pass a synagogue or a mosque, do you say, oh, how unusual? <laughs> you don't, do you? And at some level, you know that that construct and that box that people are in is the best they could do to find God. It's common, is it not? But they're doing it in a linear fashion. Humans tend to linearize everything because that is the reality at hand. The perception of God. Let's look at that for a moment. Human beings have no idea that they are a piece of God. You don't have the remembrance that we speak of. You don't remember what I remember. Oh, I was there at the wind of birth. I could tell you. I could tell you, dear one. Let me talk to you about you. Who do you really think you are? You know who sits in front of me? Old souls sit in front of me old souls they're the ones who are attracted to a place like this who would come to a meeting like this who would decide to live in a place like this they're attracted to the love of God the old souls who sit in front of me at the wind of birth that description of when you finally dropped into that portal it's a portal represented by by energies that are dichotomous you have the the linearity of the portal going to the birth canal and you have the the interdimensionality of the angelic majesty of God and they clash and they come together and create create what I call a vortex a wind that races in my face when I look at you and I say are you ready to do it again and you say yes and I say Blessed is the angel who makes the choice to become a human being yet again, knowing what they will face, knowing the potentials that could be. And they come anyway. And they come anyway. 
That's why your feet are washed. I was there when you dropped into that portal yet again, old soul. And when you're not here, you're with me. We're together. In a, in a place that you, that you cannot imagine. And I tell you these things for one reason, because at the end of this channel, I want you to remember this. You have to remember this. This is who you are. This is how you're seen by God. Remember this. In linearity, human beings search for God in an odd way. They cannot conceive that they are part of the system. All they want to do is touch the hand of the Creator. And they think that God is huge, and they are not. And that whole construct often shapes the box that they choose to worship in. Sometimes they feel they have to be subservient. Sometimes they feel they, they have to suffer a little. Because God is big and they are not. And that is the perception because they are linear. They couldn't conceive such a thing that the Creator is them. They don't see themselves as family. They don't see what I see. They can't. And so there is the search for God and the religions are born. Cryon, are you going to talk about religion? No, I'm going to talk about human beings searching for God. That's what I'm going to talk about. Cryon, are you going to tell us who's right and wrong? Yeah, I am. Blessed is the human being who searches for God because remember this phrase. I want you to remember this phrase. Because the Creator wants to be found. The Creator wants to be found. Did you ever think about that? And it doesn't matter what box you're in. It does not matter. God doesn't care how you make your discovery. And I'm going to land hard on that in a minute, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Cry to me to tell me that, that those over there in that funny building we've been told not to go to, they have it too? Oh, yeah. Here's something they're not going to tell you. You see, in linearity, it's a funny thing you do. You create these boxes, you create members, you create groups, and then you give them instructions, don't go to the other boxes. You know why? Because they'll find the same thing. <laughs> There's been healing in all of them. Miracles in all of them, because there is family there. And they may dress differently, and they may speak differently, and they may wear hats differently. And God is there. The family is there. And our hands are out to them. The profound healings that have happened in the mosques. You never hear about that, do you? That have happened in the synagogues. You don't hear about that. That have happened on the sawdust floors of those who are evangelistic. And they all claim that they have the truth because they got the healing. <laughs> they never compared notes. God's in all the boxes. I want you to digest that for a moment. Because that's the love of God. You see, we really don't care how you get here. <laughs> Well, then why is it so difficult, Cryon? What is going on here? Make it so doggone hard. Why is it more obvious? Now let us talk about you and your ways. As you sit in front of me, oh, those who call themselves metaphysical and esoteric. There's a new energy on this planet which is awakening hearts and minds to a new way of worship, a new way of understanding spirit, and it's beginning to yell to you that you are indeed a piece of the Creator. And it's hard. It's very hard. 
And the first reason it's hard is because it is not linear. <laughs> Suddenly you're in a non-linear interdimensional area where the things that you say are not acceptable to a linear perception of God. And you say things like, there are no accidents. There's a plan that is bigger. I had something to do with it. I know I did. And those who are linear will look at you and walk the other way. It separates families, and you know what I speak of. It separates friends, does it not? Just because you have chosen not to take the linear path. Because in your DNA, old soul, you feel the wisdom of the ages. That's what's changing. The shift that we have spoken of for all of these years, almost 20, is affecting the DNA at its core level. There is an awakening going on. And there are those sitting in the room who know what I speak of. It's hard. It's hard to become interdimensional because it's odd to those around you, is it not? It's certainly odd to the twelve. <laughs> but that's not the main reason. I'll give it to you. Why is it difficult? <laughs> and you didn't expect this. Because the Creator wants to be found. What happens, dear ones, when you start pushing on that door? There is a portal to your higher self inside each one of you. Picture it as a door that you are able to push upon. And there's a light behind it, a very bright light. And it's one you want to see. It is a direct pipeline to home. Some of you work with it every day in your healings, in your meditations, and yet you continue to push because you want a little more, don't you? Because you want a little more. And here's what's hard and here's what you don't expect is that when you begin to push on the door, on the other side of the door is a creator that wants to be found and that's where we are and we are going to help you open it. And when that door starts to open by itself, when you just push it a little, that's when you get frightened and that's when you back away and you go, I don't know. I didn't expect it open by itself. I didn't think there really was anybody on the other side. I'm trying to, to, to touch the face of the Creator. I'm just trying to absorb a little energy from God. You didn't expect the hand to come out from behind the door, did you? And hold yours and say, don't let go. Don't let go. It's scary. That's why it's hard. There's an axiom that we have taught for years, and that is this, that the human mind cannot unknow anything. You cannot deconstruct a reality you've experienced. It is impossible right now for you to unremember this day. You cannot forget it voluntarily. It is there, etched into your brain. It will be until the day you take your last breath. The reason this is hidden is because there are only a certain amount of human beings who can touch the face of the Creator and not be unbalanced. Less than one half of one percent of humanity will do what some of you are willing to do. Did you know that? It's not going to be a new age earth. The shift is about you. It's about the way humans are beginning to think. But it's about you, old souls, Lemurians, each one. That's what we wanted to tell you now. There's more. Oh, there's more. And here it comes. Crying, how do we do it? It's not that hard. Not that hard. The first thing you're going to have to do is become interdimensional. <laughs> and here's why it's not hard, because you can suspend belief with help 
from the other side of that door, that hand that comes through there and wants to touch you, will help you suspend belief to start thinking in a circle. Something else happens when you become interdimensional. Oh, how do I say this? There's 17 people in this room. In the last three years, who have lost another human being that they loved, who was close to them, 17 of you. Mates, moms, dads, kids. 17 of you have something in common. You got a hole in your heart. 17 of you. I want to talk to you for a minute. Not long. Blessed is the human being who comes to this planet with a plan where they agree to suffer in this way for allowance of those to pass over and become grander in energy than they could have when they were here. And that's you who has allowed them to do that. And I want to tell you today that this suffering is something you have put upon yourself. It's hard to say that. Because when the heart hurts, it hurts. And you say, well, how can I keep it from hurting? Okay, I'll give you a picture. And it's a tough one. Even for my partner to say, it's a tough one. Because it requires you become interdimensional. The one that you lost is going to stand by your side for the rest of your life until you take the last breath. They dropped their body so they could be grander in the scheme of things that they came for. And you can still hold their hand to the end of your life. And there doesn't have to be suffering. Oh, it may not be the same because they're not in physical form. But if you start becoming interdimensional, you'll know they're there. You'll feel their presence. You can call them by name. You go outside and look at the stars and know that they're right there next to you. Have an epiphany with me tonight. that's the difference between a linear human being and one who is willing to put the string in a circle they're not gone how do I know because I see them there's a contract between you it's not over it's just begun it's hard isn't it oh that's why there's so few of you on this planet, they're going to go there and do this. It's tough. It's tough. Number two, you got to really understand that you're family. You cannot even begin to approach this belief system without feeling the family connection. There can't be God and you. You can't put it separate like that. You've got to stand here and say, I'm a piece of the whole. I was there when the earth was created, and you were. You were with me. We watched it together. How can I, how can I convince you of this? You've got to start thinking family. And when you do, there's going to be a revelation. Number three. Become compassionate. In all things, become compassionate. I've just given you the three rules to touch the face of God and interdimensional understanding. Number one, that was an understanding and realization of family. Number two, 
Number three, a compassionate spirit. And you might say, well, Cryon, those are, those are attitudes. What are, what are the steps that we have to do? And the answer is yes. I'll tell you what happens, dear human being, when you start those three attributes and you combine them together. You cannot keep that door from flying open and that hand coming out. Because you've just given permission for the higher self to join you. As much as you can take, as much as you want, in your own way, within your own path, with your own timeline, that hand will come out. And you never have to let go of it. I want to give you a perception tonight that I've only given two other times in the history of my channeling. I'm going to give it to a group that can understand it. All of you can understand it. I'm going to give you the, the, the perception of the search for God from my standpoint, not from yours. And maybe finally you'll understand a little more about why it's acceptable to be in, in a cathedral on your knees in a, in a place that perhaps some of you would not want to be and touch the face of God. In order to do this, I have to set up a metaphor. I want to talk to the parents in the room, which is most of you, but especially the moms. Mom, mother, I want to take you on a journey. Do you remember when the child was born? You know how precious that moment is? Can I take you there for a moment, just a moment? You remember when the infant first looked at you and you looked at, at them? You remember the connection that was there? Doesn't it make your heart flutter just a little bit to remember those things? Oh, nothing like it. Nothing like the love of a mother and a child. There's just nothing like it. When you leave the other side of the veil and you come through that birth canal and you start this journey of yours that has a purpose that you don't know, don't understand, it's like the child that leaves home. We have that same feeling for you. Not as children, but the love bond is the same. Looking to your energy seemingly eye to eye before you leave. Now, mother, suppose, just suppose that you lost track of your kids. If such a thing could be, and it has happened on this planet through circumstances, that you lost track of the children. And you knew where they were and perhaps in the country they were in, but it was vast and huge and you had no idea and you knew that at some point in time they were going to have to find you for this to ever be a reunion. Imagine that for a moment and here you are heartbroken waiting for that call that may never come from the child who's doing everything they can to find mom and dad. Can you even think of such a thing? And then one day, and then one day, you get the call. And you pick up the phone. Oh, there's the voice. There's the voice. Precious, precious voice. Mom. Is that you? I found you. Oh, oh yes, you did. What a day of rejoicing. Wouldn't that be a day of rejoicing? Mom, can you feel it? Sweet little voice on the other side of the line. And perhaps there's, there's two of them, a brother and a sister, or two sisters, two children. Mom, we found you. Oh, yes, you did. And then there's the question. Mom, can we come home? What are you going to say? 
I know what you're going to say. You're going to say the same thing that Spirit says when you push on that door. Please do it. And the metaphor of coming home is that connection with the higher self that gets you back into remembrance, back into the reunion with the thing that you know best, that you have left and don't even know you missed it. Hey, Mom, can I come home? And so you're excited. The children are coming home. Indeed they are. And you wait and you wait. And then you see it. Down the road, there are two cars coming. And each car has a child in it. The reunion is about to be complete. You're about ready to see them again and you've missed them for so long. About ready to look in their eyes yet again. Something you didn't know you were ever going to do. And you can hardly wait and your heart is beating and the tears are flowing. You can hardly wait. Now, follow this metaphor and understand this dear human being for the rest of your life. One child shows up in a green car, one child shows up in a red car. Do you care? And there will be those who will say that God will say, I'm sorry, the color of the car is wrong. Go back, go back, go back, go back. It's silly, isn't it? It's silly. No, we don't care what color the car is. All we care is about the reunion. We care about the heart. We care about the connection. We care about the integrity of the search. We care about taking your hand and starting a new life of remembrance. That's what we care about. That's what we care about. That's what we care about. The Creator wants to be found. And that's something they never tell you in church. That's the message. That's the message. That's it in its entirety. And if you've never heard another one from this channel, then it would be complete. I want to tell you something. I want you to remember something. Because we're going to close. From my side of the veil. From my side of the veil. Do you know what makes angels rejoice? I'll tell you. When they get the phone call. Mom. Can I come home? That's when they start their party. How about you? You ready to push on the door or not? And there are some of you who say, well, I've been doing that all my life. Oh, yeah. But I want to give you a bigger door tonight. Push a little harder because the light's about to get a lot brighter. Healings have occurred in this area tonight, in this room, in this evening. You're starting to understand, aren't you? Some of the things that escaped you. We want to be found. It's not that hard. You don't have to climb that many steps. That's what we wanted to tell you. That's what we wanted to tell you. And so it is that the human beings in this room are honored for their pleasant presence this, this evening. It's hard to say goodbye. We are aware of the linearity of the moment. <laughs> Cryon knows what time it is. doesn't make it easy to leave because we have established a bond have you felt it I know you are I tell you what I'm going to leave the entourage right here 
And when you come in tomorrow, that's what you're going to feel when you enter the room. Oh, this gymnasium may never be the same. And so it is.